Hi everyone, welcome back and in this video we'll be discussing about a pretty sweet hack on how you should use Stack Overflow to increase your developer knowledge, become a better developer and also add something to your developer portfolio. Let's get started. So if you're a developer, you have heard about Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is a Q&A form site where some people ask questions, other people answer them and most people just watch either questions or answers and copy code. That's what all Stack Overflow is about, but it is an integral part of the developer community. However, I have used Stack Overflow personally a lot to learn development. And in this video, my aim is to just walk you through my journey so far on how I have used Stack Overflow to become a better developer, plus give you a few insights on how you can execute the same strategy in order to become a great developer while you're learning things like web development. Okay, so right now I'm logged into my Stack Overflow account. I don't use it that much often actively now for asking questions or answering questions but I used to do that a lot so what you would do if you go to my profile you're gonna see this spike right here which which is in 2018 and 2019-ish time, right? The spike is because I became super active on Stack Overflow and I started answering. I mean even if you go in the activity chart I'm not sure how if I can go beyond this but you would see that it's it's usually growing right so and it's still growing i mean this is basically the result of me my previous answers just getting upwards but the spike which you see here is what i want you to observe what the spike means is that you have either started asking too many questions or answering too many questions which have resulted in upwards so it's basically a score based system stack overflow gives you a reputation score which is just a point score system for every question upward i think they used to give you five points or ten points now i think they have normalized that but anyway the point here is that you would see i have asked 86 questions and answered 374 questions both of these metrics are helpful you can see my top question has 135 votes and my top answer has two, 205 votes so what this means is that if you actively answer questions on Stack Overflow, it actually builds up a reputation. And plus, Stack Overflow is a website which gives you a lot of moderator access as well as you gain this reputation, right? So I have a bunch of moderator tools with me, which I can use, like seeing some questions if I want to close them, open them. Pretty much if I'm just, you know, free and I want to just help the community, I can do it with the moderator tools. But the important part here is if I go into my answers, what you're going to see is that I don't have a lot of, you know, all the high voted answers. You would see a bunch of answers which have no upvotes, um, which have even negative upvotes sometimes, which where we could learn what's wrong. So let's take a look at this answer, which I had styling input fields placeholder with CSS. And this is something I answered in 2018, right? As you might have guessed, most of my answers came in 2018 time. So what am I doing here? I'm trying to answer somebody else's query and I'm trying to think of a solution myself, right? And most of these answers which I have done, you would see that I have tried to come up with the solution from scratch. It's not like I just already knew or it was present. I just did that. And most of the answers you would see is pretty much just me, right? There's just one answer to this question. So why did I do that? For upwards? No, not really. But this was mostly because if I was able to help another person, I know that that person understands the concept, right? And that means I understand the concept. This is super powerful because this is a form of a teaching. If you haven't heard it before, you can hear it here for the first time that if you teach a concept to somebody, you actually become much better in that concept yourself, right? That This is true. This is 100% true. So teaching can come in various forms. It could be your offline things where you discuss with friends. It could be YouTube online things which I have done for a very long time it could be answering other people's questions and so on so this is what I used to do all the time the framework I used is basically the following so what I would do is I would go ahead and go to this questions area now this questions area has a filter which says newest questions right and one more thing I would do is I would add my watch tags here so stack overflow has a watch tag section where you can allow pretty much you know just add a bunch of tags which you think you know and technologies you can answer and what stack overflow would do is that it will highlight those questions which are there right and if you are on the newest tab you will see that these questions are pretty much extremely new and people are looking for the answers for this so more than anything what i would recommend you to do is keep an eye on this newest question maybe you can just refresh it once in a while and Take a look at questions which you can answer. For example, if you want to answer, let's say if I can find any JavaScript like question, which is a simple JavaScript one, nothing complex. 
So let's see this one. Clear create element from page using remove child. So this guy is trying to figure out how you can create elements, um, you know, dynamically and then remove them as well. So this could be pretty easy. I mean, you just have to store the reference, put it, push the elements in an object and then run a loop again and write element dot remove. That's it. But what this would do is that maybe it would allow you to understand DOM in a much better way. Now I haven't, haven't read the question completely, so it might be the wrong answer, but if you just go ahead and look into his, his actual code and try to do a little bit of debugging, you would be able to figure out what the exact problem this person needs. And more than anything, when you answer this question, you not only would be helping this person, but you would also be reassuring that you know the answer to this question. And this is like insanely important because I have done this so many times. You can see it from my reputation score and the count of answers which I have. And it really helps. It really helps you to think logically. It really helps you to be more publicly accountable because once you write the answer, you will be upvoted or downvoted, right? People will leave comments. People will say this code is stupid or this would not work. So you would be actually exposing your code or your solution in front of other developers as well. So highly, highly recommend you to do that. And this section pretty much updates very often, right? I would not recommend you to go into like active section or maybe like bounties as well, because the bounty questions are probably hard. That's why people put bounties on them. Active questions are mostly answered a lot. So you may want to try it, uh, not active, but maybe like, you know, the weekly questions, I think, or the words question anyway. But what you want to do is stick to this newest part and take a look, the, look at this question. For example, validation of password in Angular using regular expressions, right? So this is an amazing exercise for you. If you, they have already given them, you know, what are the criteria? need to have at least eight characters at a maximum of 12. So, you know, you have to write something like eight to 12 in regular expression, um, at least one uppercase character, at least three lowercase letters, numbers. It is awesome. It's like having a regular expression exercise for you, right? And the good thing here is when you help this person, you actually revise or you know you are actually able to understand how to create this yourself this part is super important and yep this is how i built most of my reputation you would see i had a few a couple of um you know high-end answers for example this one is, is very simple i answered it back in 2014 and which has eventually picked up as a as a answer as a top answer um but yeah i mean for this question for example which which was <laughs> something i really liked i was really proud of um was how do you evaluate how do you write a code where a is one and a is two and a is three becomes true and i have like really enjoyed this answer this question and a bunch of answers here as well so it's a good question i enjoyed this question so you would also encounter a lot of such questions where you would start enjoying what people are asking, right? So my suggestion is if you're free, if you are stuck in tutorial hell, for example, if you feel like that, although we already have a video on that, how do you get out of tutorial hell? But I think this could be also a step which we could include. Not everyone wants to build projects all the time, right? So what you could do is you can help these people figure out problems and Stack Overflow is a good place to do that right so yep that is my suggestion to you how you should use stack overflow stop asking questions only questions on stack overflow because most of the questions are already there even if you are asking questions make sure you structure them properly i mean i don't have a history of asking a very you know very well questions very well formatted you will see that my um i have a bunch of you know downvoted questions as well so that's that's not me uh, but yeah, I have learned a thing or two about answering questions on Stack Overflow. So that is something you should do. Plus it's, it's a nice system they have built. You have badges, you have, you know, score systems, you have moderator tools, which is pretty much everything is automatic. So it's a, it's a neat system to be a part of. And I believe like if you're applying for a developer job, having a Stack Overflow link in your resume. And if I visit a profile and I see like this guy has helped so many people, he or she has written answers getting 100, 150, 200 of votes. I would seriously consider that person for the position, right? Because that, that is a social proof. I mean, having 100, 200 people of voting your question, of voting your answer is a huge social proof that you know what you're talking about. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's what I would advise in order to, you know, become, become a better developer. That is start using Stack Overflow more seriously. Start using it for answering questions. And the way I told you was going to this questions area, sticking to the newest one 
and taking a look at questions you can answer. You can pretty much take out one hour a week, one hour a day, maybe whatever works for you and just sit and find questions, sit and find questions you can answer and do it. Like create an aim that I would only get up after I have answered 10 questions or 20 questions or 30 questions like that. Helpful for the community, helpful for you. It's something I believe you should try out. If you already have, or if you have answered questions on Stack Overflow, let me know what your experience has been. That is all for this video. If you like this, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon.